value is equal to 11.33. Kurtosis is also statistically significant at negative 2.57, so because these values are both greater than an absolute value of 1.96, we would conclude that the distribution is non-normal. And the kolmogorov smirnov and the Shapiro-Wilk are also statistically significant, both less than 0 0.05. And so what happens in these cases is that people feel like they can't do a parametric statistic like a t-test or ANOVA on data distributed like this. And that's a really unfortunate conclusion because I, a seasoned researcher that has experience in these cases would say that most of the distributions are this is about as good as normal as you can get in practice. So it would suggest that we should never do any uh, parametric statistics on our on our data. So statisticians and, and applied researchers use a term called robust. And people refer to the t-test and ANOVA as robust. Not enough people refer to it as, as, as them to them as robust. But I'll, I'll show you based on simulation research, they are robust. And what robust means is, and first you'd have to know that we test statistics usually with an alpha rate of 0 0.05, so there's a 5% chance of us rejecting the null hypothesis incorrectly. We accept that 5% uh, error rate. And people say that statistics are robust across conditions if they keep the per comparison uh, or alpha rate at between 0 0.04 and 0 0.06. So it doesn't have to be exactly 0 0.05. Somewhere in the 0.04 to 0 0.06 range is considered a robust statistic. If it blows out beyond that, then we start to get concerned that our t-test or our ANOVA is not uh, t keeping our alpha rate at a appropriate level. And the way uh, people go about evaluating whether statistics are robust or not is they do Monte Carlo simulations. So I'm not going to describe in a lot of detail what a Monte Carlo simulation is, but I will report to you or review for you a study that was published by Schmieder et al. in 2010 who wanted to evaluate the robustness of the ANOVA in the context of non-normally distributed data. And inferences related to ANOVA uh, would uh, transfer to the t-test because the ANOVA and the t-test are in fact the same test when you only have two groups. So Schmieder et al. simulated three distributions. Uh, a normal distribution with skew of zero, kurtosis of zero, a rectangular distribution with skew of zero and kurtosis of 1.8, and an exponential distribution. So this is a very non-normally uh, distributed uh, data with skew of two and kurtosis of nine. And they simulated data under the null hypothesis. So data were simulated so that there really were no differences between the means in the population, or mu's in the population. So there's no difference. So th when the t-test and the or the ANOVA is applied to these data, it should only find uh, significant results in 5% of cases. They also looked at uh, distributions, or I should say population values, where there in fact were differences between groups. So it was quite an extensive simulation from that perspective. And what they did is they conducted 5,000 ANOVAs per condition. And it's from those 5,000 ANOVAs that they estimated the percentage of ANOVAs that were statistically significant. So in the null hypothesis uh, simulated data, technically there shouldn't be any ANOVAs that are statistically significant. But when we specify alpha 0 0.05, we expect that there will be 5% that will be significant. And they, they simulated the data where group sizes were equal to 25, which is pretty standard, uh, which is a pretty standard sample size I in practice. So again, repeating myself here, if the ANOVAs are robust, 5% of ANOVAs will be statistically significant in the null hypothesis condition. So what did Schmieder et al. find? Actually, before I get to that, I actually simulated what a distribution of data look looks like uh, with skew of 2 and kurtosis of 5.43. So this is similar to the exponential distribution. My hunch is that most researchers would be quite concerned if they saw a distribution like this in their data, and they probably wouldn't use a t-test or ANOVA to evaluate the difference between means. But what did Schmieder et al. say we should do based on the simulation results? 
Well, here are the results. So for a distribution that was normal, 